boys and girls, today we'll have a look at this pen, the Noodler's Nippon Set. I have already reviewed a Nippon Set, but that was, I think, an acrylic. And these are the Ebonite Nippon Sets that you can buy now. This is the beginning of 2015. And I got one, and it's a very fascinating pen. And today we're going to have a look at uh, its features. Uh, cover the past the pen, tell what I like about it, what I don't like about it, and then I'll attempt to do a writing sample. Okay, let's start with the the top of the pen right there. You can see it, it's uh, this is ebonite. They came in four different types. Ebonite. This is a a nice brown swirl type pattern that I enjoy a lot. The the noodleless clip that we've seen a lot before. I like this clip. It's very springy. I like like that. It's easy to use. The center band that says Noodler's Ink, and then we have the whole barrel. Now, this is a relatively large pen. It's the largest pen in the Noodler's lineup, and it's definitely sizable. This is a serious pen. Uh, I, would, I would say this is an oversized, not so much in diameter, but definitely in length, as you can see here. And when you post it, it becomes huge. It doesn't post very deeply. Okay, then we have the nib and of course the nib is spectacular because it is a music nib with three tines and as you can see there it also says Noodles Ink Co at the bottom uh, it has a special ebonite feed with two channels to accommodate the three tines uh, and as to filling you can do two things you can use this built-in uh, plunger type converter or you can just unscrew that, fill the whole barrel with ink so that it will really hold a lot of ink, uh, and then put some silicon grease there. Uh, I do believe it came with a built-in O-ring. Yes, it does. Um, but even so, I would put on just a little bit of silicon grease to make sure you don't get leakage, because with such a large barrel, there will really be a bunch of milliliters of ink spilling everywhere. Okay. What do I like about the pen? What do I not like about the pen? As I said, I have reviewed in a pawn set before the acrylic model that is currently not available. That was um, sort of a prototype sent to someone uh, as the prize of a contest. And that pen wrote very well. This pen did not. And uh, the reason is that I don't know. What I like about the pen, let's start there, and then I'll come back to writing or lack thereof. Uh, I like the size. It's a nice, decent, oversized pen. I like the material. Ebonite is something some people love, some people hate, but it's a very unique feeling. It's very smooth. Uh, I love the finish. It's very vintage looking. It's a very interesting idea to try and put a, <clears throat> a flexible music nib on a modern pen because we don't have that many music nibs available. On the other hand, Pilot does it, Platinum does it, there's quite a bunch, Sailor does it, so it's not like there are no music nibs available. However, those music nibs come at quite a price, and this pen is $75. Now, the problem is that if you spend $75 and the pen hardly writes, that's a bit of an issue. And we know that noodless pens are a bit of a lottery ticket. Some will write, and some will not. And I'm not trying to be mean here, but I have quite some experience with fountain pens, and I have a lot of experience with noodleless pens, both directly and indirectly from what I hear from other people. And my conclusion after all of this is some pens that you buy will not write if they are noodleless pens. And this one writes, but it doesn't flex. Once you flex it, it runs completely dry and it will stop writing. Uh, and that's a problem because it's advertised as a flex nib. So you can't really treat it as a flex nib, you can't really treat it as a semi-flex nib, you can treat it as a nib with some spring. And that's a bit of an issue, I would say. Now, that acrylic model I had wrote fine, it flexed fine, and this one does not. Now, I'm not a newbie. I mean, I do have experience with pens. I have tuned a lot of nibs, both for myself and for other people. I've made pens right, but this one, a lot of issues. I have taken out the feed. I have soaked it in ammonia and water. I have scrubbed the feed. I have opened the feed channels. I have adjusted nib and feed position. I have tuned the nib to make the tines well tuned as they should be. 
and yet the pen still doesn't flex adequately. It will flex a little bit, then it will run dry, sometimes it will completely stop writing, and that's what it does. And I'm not the only one. The problem with reviewing pens is always that you wonder, am I the only one who has this problem? Well, go online, check out user experiences, and you will find that some people are ecstatic, their pens write beautifully, as that acrylic model I used earlier, and a lot of people are complaining that their pens will not write at all, or will skip a lot, or will just run dry, or will not flex. I've even had someone, a friend, come in here, she had a, a, a Nippon set, and it simply did not even write. It could write one or two words, and then it would fall completely dry. And I'm not talking flex there, I'm talking normal writing without any pressure. She knows fountain pens, she has a large collection, she knows what she's doing, and her pen would simply not write, even though she had done quite a couple of things to tweak it. So, interesting concept, but at $75, a pen should write all the time, every time. We're no longer talking about $15 pens or $20 pens. We have moved up quite a bit in the price range, and if it's still a lottery ticket, I'm a little hesitant to really recommend getting this pen. Now, that's my opinion, and of course you can disagree. That's perfectly fine. If your Nippon set writes beautifully, I'm very happy for you. I just want to warn people that it is possible that you buy a pen and it will not write. Okay, some measurements. Capped, I get 152.7 millimeters, that's 5.97 inches. Uncapped, I have 5.28 inches, or 134.2 millimeters. Section diameter is 0.43 inches or 11 millimeters all the way up to 0.49 or 12 and a half millimeters. And the barrel diameter is slightly tapered but it's something like 0.54 or 13.8 millimeters. Having said that, let's take some weight. The pen is well as you've seen. I think it's about yeah it's about half inked up. Let's see what it weighs then. Capped and all, I have 24 grams. That's all as to it. Let's do a writing sample. I hope this was useful, and I gladly see you later. Bye bye. All right, here we go with the Noodler's Nippon set. This is nothing else than a Noodler's. Nippon set, which as you can see has a really nice pretty wet flow, which is cool. The nib, well it's a music nib, it's one size fits all, no medium, broad, fine, whatever. And the ink is a, an, a, a platinum. I'm going to write CB, it's carbon black. Alright, let's do some normal writing. This is a fountain pen ink by the way, just for the record. And right now, my writing experience really is pleasant. Uh, is pleasant. It's fairly smooth. It's nice and wet, so it works well. If I go for fast writing... you see that there's not really any issues either. There was a bit of a skip there, but that may honestly have been me misaligning the nib a little bit, so I would say that the feed keeps up very well with normal writing. Now, as to wetness, no complaints there. As I said, in everyday normal writing, there are no issues. Okay, now we get to the fun part, the flexing. Just applying a bit more pressure with every stroke. And you see that there is quite some potential there. And it doesn't even railroad that badly. Not at all. So that's very good. Okay, now there was a bit of railroading. Now we're slowly depleting the feed. And then we're pretty much done. Now this in principle is normal. When you flex this badly, then at some point the nib will no longer keep up. Of course you have uh, sorry, the feed will not all keep up. Of course, you have three tines here, so they can railroad on both sides or one side, etc. Now, if I do some, I'm going to do some flex writing. I'll gently tap the nib a few times to really prime the feed, and then see what happens. Uh, let's write the words 
lottery ticket. I'm really going slow, I don't want to cheat. You see that the pen has now stopped writing. I'll tap it a few times more. Now let me readjust the nib so that I'm really aligning the times and the direction I'm writing. So there's no trickery there or misalignment. When you use flex you typically slow down a bit so that the feed has the opportunity to keep up. And as you can see, this is the flex performance. So if you use this as a normal pen for normal writing, no problems. And as soon as you start a flex, it fails. And uh, that's a pity. Now, reverse writing for those of you who like that. You probably hear that's not the most pleasant of experiences. Um, and then finally, we have the end. And again, normal writing, it writes nice and wetly, no problems whatsoever. So don't treat, I cannot treat this as a flex pen, I have to treat this as maybe semi-flex. The lines are nice, but once it is turned into actual writing, and also bear in mind I'm use, going that way, should I go this way, I don't know what's going to happen then. You see there is railroading almost immediately. So it's very good for demonstrations where people do the writing samples like this, or just like that and then it looks like it's a really nice uh, wet flex pen as you can see already here it starts to fail so there you have it the noodlers and the pond set i hope this was useful and uh, i'll gladly see you later bye bye